this is the cutting edge stuff as far as I'm concerned. Um, and it's about something called very small embryonic like stem cells. Now, these have been talked about for many years. Uh, when they were first discovered, people sort of poo pooed it completely and said, no, that's uh, an artifact or it's not a stem cell. Or they even refuse to see them. Uh, they, just, they just said they don't exist. Um, subsequently, that's been shown to be a load of nonsense. And most people now, uh, with any knowledge at all, um, uh, understand that the SELs do exist. And they are found in uh, many tissues, um, but more, most importantly, in our peripheral blood. So every one of, every one of us has VSELs in our peripheral blood. Now, there are very specific markers for these cells so that we know what, all know what we're talking about, as I mentioned earlier, and that they are mentioned there. And not a great interest in, in the context of this presentation, but important for the scientists. Um, you can see from the title that they're very small, and um, you can see there the um, one to four microns. A micron is a millionth of a, a, a millimeter, and so so they're, they're very small. They're little tiny little things, and they exist in the same areas, in the same we call it compartment as platelets, which are um, this, the uh, the uh, things which help us to. Uh, achieve a uh, blood clot during during bleeding and um, so they're, they're very important in normal physiology now the thing about VSELs also is that they are pluripotent now I've avoided any sort of major stem cell terminology up to now but pluripotent is important because it means that in theory they can be used to make any type of cell now, things like bone marrow, they're multipotent, they can make blood, and the mes mesenchymal stem cells are multipotent, that they can make uh, connective tissue and so on. But VSELs are pluripotent. Now, there, there are other pluripotent cells around, um, embryonic stem cells, for example, and that there are also induced uh, pluripotent stem cells, which... Um, are man-made so so you take a, a cell like a skin cell or something you introduce some new new genes into it and it turns into a pluripotent stem cell that's interesting experimentally um, not really of great interest from a clinical point of view because of the potential risks involved in using a genetically modified cell to treat someone with, but who knows in the future, it could be could be the way to go. Um, other people are using transduction factors to take um, um, cells like skin um, straight to the cell of interest. So they take a skin cell straight to a nerve cell or whatever we want. Uh, and this sort of uh, bypasses the induced pluripotent stem cell stage. But that's... Uh, once again, technology that needs to be proven in the clinic. Uh, fantastically interesting from an experimental point of view, but not terribly useful in the clinic. The reason I'm very keen on VSELs, or very small embryonic-like stem cells, is that they do have an, a, a clinical application. Um, there's been lots and lots of studies um, my own work with my colleagues has shown some fantastic results, which I'll mention in a minute. And other workers have shown that uh, VSTLs could even be the, the, the actual stem cell that makes the bone marrow stem cell. So it could be the ultimate stem cell in the bone marrow. And there's a lot of research going on on that at the moment, but uh, I, I think it's looking quite positive. Um, it's also been suggested that VSELs can help in uh, psychiatric disorders uh, simply because they can get into the brain very easily, whereas other stem cells are too large to actually pass into the brain. VSELs are small and they can get in there quite easily. And they've been shown to uh, uh, show 
what's called neurogenesis, so the formation of new nerve cells in psychiatric disorders, which could be a benefit to those patients. So fantastic, fantastic possibilities going on here. Um, not surprisingly, these things are found almost all through the body. Uh, we find them in the peripheral blood, uh, cord blood, all those tissues there. I think that they are the ultimate stem cells from our early development. Uh, we've all developed from a, a, an embryo, and uh, that embryo develops pluripotent stem cells, makes all other tissues. The VSELs are part of that process. So I think it's a, an embryonic um, uh, sort of remnant, if you like, of of um of development which is easily accessible in our bodies um some workers and once again keep an open mind some workers have, have suggested that the SELs could even be oncogenic they might might be involved in uh tumor formation um and the the, the concept here is that the SELs might fuse with normal cells and um uh, and cause uh, tumors in that way um, to be honest that, that theory needs a lot more work it could be true but I'm not sure that it is um, and the other thing to say is that um, the SELs are generally accepted to be uh, inactive in adults and um, so in, in you and me on a day-to-day -day basis these cells don't seem to be doing anything very much now, that could be because our understanding is not very good, or it could be that they're not doing very much. So we need to, we need to look at this much more deeply. I think that the SELs are almost certainly having a, a, a very important role in our day-to-day our -day physiology, especially if you consider that they are the stem cell, they could be the stem cells that give rise to bone marrow stem cells and enormous enormous ideas and and contributions are needed from scientists to get this worked out <laughs>